Hello friends, this video on neat electromagnetic induction is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's move further and let's now discuss about the Lenz law. Now it, this is a very important law uh, in electromagnetic induction. So this law states that the polarity of induced EMF is such that it tends to produce induced current in such a direction that it opposes the change in magnetic flux that produced it. So you know, you I, I was just talking about that some time back. So the uh, irony here is that the magnetic flux, whenever there is a change in magnetic flux, that produces induced EMF. So it is something like this. Uh, let's say there is a change in magnetic flux because of which there is an induced EMF. Now when there is an induced EMF, there is also an induced current and now what happens is the current is such that it opposes the change in magnetic flux. Now how was this current produced? The current was produced because of the change in magnetic flux and now once the current is produced it opposes the change in magnetic flux. So that is what was told by Lenz law. Lenz, Lenz law is in accordance with the law of conservation of energy. How? That's because here we see that when the induced current or the induced EMF opposes the magnetic flux or opposes the change in magnetic flux, then some work needs to be done against this opposition, right? And this work appears as electrical energy in the circuit. So that's how we can say that the Lenz law satisfies the law of conservation of energy. So now that we have uh, discussed about this opposition between induced current and the change in magnetic flux, it becomes important to talk about the direction of induced current. So that's very, very important as well as interesting. Now, this is something which you really need to focus. Okay. Now, whenever you see that there is an increase in magnetic flux, so, so this is like a tip to find out direction of induced current. So whenever the magnetic flux increases, that time the magnetic field due to the induced current is opposite to the existing magnetic field. This is the key. So whenever you see that the magnetic flux is increasing because there are two ways in which the magnetic flux can change. If there is a possibility that the magnetic flux is increasing with time, the second possibility is that the magnetic flux is decreasing with time. So in case the magnetic flux is increasing with time, that means the magnetic field due to the induced current is opposite to the existing magnetic field. So that's how you get the direction of the magnetic field due to the induced current. Now once you get that, then what do you do? Then you apply the right hand thumb rule to find out the direction of the induced current. So let us take this example. So let us suppose that this is a magnetic field. So obviously whenever we denote a magnetic field with a cross, that means it is in the downward direction. When we denote it with a dot, that means it is in the upward direction. So in this case, the magnetic field is in the downward direction. And let's say that we have this conductor. So right now the conductor is outside the vicinity of the magnetic field. That means the area within the magnetic field is zero right now. Now let's say that this particular conductor moves in this fashion and now what happens? Now roughly this much part or this much area of the conductor is within the magnetic field. So basically what happened due to this movement of the conductor? So due to this movement of the conductor, the area of the conductor increased. Right? Now since the area increased, therefore the magnetic flux also increased. Now since the magnetic flux increased, so as per our rule, the magnetic field due to the induced current is opposite to the existing magnetic field. So what is the direction of existing magnetic field? It is downward direction as is shown on the screen. So that means the magnetic field due to the induced current that will be in the upward direction. Right? So now you know that. Now let's make use of the right hand. So take your right hand, put your thumb in such a way on the screen that the magnetic field is on the uh, upward direction from the screen. 
right or from the screen means let you consider this screen as a sheet of paper so from the sheet of paper you point your thumb in the upward direction so then what do you see what, what is the direction in which your fingers curl so that you will see that your fingers curl in the anti clockwise direction that means the direction of induced current is anti clockwise that's simple right so it is just that you need to remember this so whenever the magnetic flux is increasing that means the magnetic field due to the induced current is opposite to the existing magnetic field and once you know the direction of the magnetic field due to induced current then you can simply apply the right hand thumb rule so i think you just try this out yourself and it will be uh, you know more clear to you in fact you take your right hand place it on a sheet of paper and just prove this entire thing so that it is more clear so when you place your right hand it would be somewhat like this your fingers would curl in this fashion and your thumb would point in the upward direction like towards me from the screen and now this is the anti clockwise direction so in this fashion we find out the direction of induced current so now let's move ahead and we will talk about another important concept that is motional emf so can you guess something from the name so motional emf that means it has something to do it, it is uh, an emf which is induced due to the motion of a conductor so let's see what exactly it is a potential difference maintained between ends of conductor as long as it moves through a uniform magnetic field so if you have a conductor which is moving through a uniform magnetic field so as long as it is moving there is a potential difference which is maintained between the two ends of the conductor so how do you uh, and this potential difference is known as motional emf why it is called motional emf because this potential difference which is also called emf exists only as long as the conductor conductor is in motion so the cause of emf is motion so it is called motional emf so how do we calculate motional emf so motional emf is given by v cross b dot dl where v is the velocity with which the conductor is moving b is the existing magnetic field and dl is the length of the conductor so these are the three values on which the uh, on which motional emf depends so let us take example so our first example is a semiconductor con semi circular conducting loop so let us say this is the semi circular conducting loop now let's name this let's say that this end is a and this end is b okay now we learned that emf is found by this expression v cross b dot dn okay now here in this case v cross b is basically v b sin theta into what is dl dl in this case is the length of the conductor so how do we find out the length of the conductor because it it is in the shape of a semicircle so what we do we replace this loop with an emf joining the two ends let's say this is end a this is end b we replace this entire loop with an emf like this right because we are going to calculate the emf between the two ends of the conductor so basically this length is the length between the two end points of the conductor so how much is this length so let's say if this is the radius so then this entire length would be 2r right so in that case we can say that emf will be equal to vb sin theta into 2r now let us say that the theta between the velocity and the magnetic field is equal to 90 degree so if theta is equal to 90 degree in that case sin theta will be equal to 1 so in that case e will be equal to 2 vbr so this would be the uh, motional emf in case of a semi circular conducting loop now let's take one more example uh, so now we take the example of a moving circular loop so we have a complete circle so in this case what happens again in a circle we want to find out the uh, potential difference between these two end points 
now again we will do the same thing now since this circle is moving like this we will just find out the distance between the two end points and how much is the distance between the two end points if this is r this is also r so the total distance between the two end points will be 2r so emf in this case will also be equal to 2vbr the same thing because here also theta is 90 degree <coughs> and dl is equal to 2r now these are some specific shapes so it is becoming easy for us to calculate the value of dl now what if we have some irregular shape for example if we have some conductor like this some irregular shape so now what happens let's say we consider any point so at this point so this particular point may be the v is in this direction that is the velocity is in this direction okay so in that case it might be making some angle theta like this so in this case emf will be equal to v v cos theta into l so instead of v you have the cos component of v that's because it is irregular and the velocity is in some other direction Right, so depending upon a particular situation, we can find out the motional EMF of the conductor. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes, and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.